What is up, obscure mic people? Today, we are going to be checking out a microphone from Senal, and that microphone is the Senal SCM660, which comes in this nice, convenient carrying case. Flight case. Flighty. And this microphone will run you about 150 bucks. It is a multi-pattern condenser microphone, large diaphragm condenser. Beautiful looking capsule in there. Actually, I think I have this capsule in a little case to do a mod with. I don't know if I was going to do that on the mono price tube or I, I don't know. I just don't know, but 150 bucks. Let's show, let's show them what they get. Johnny, who is Johnny? So when you open the box to the Ceno microphone, you're going to find some stuff. Yes. Some stuff. We got some documentation, all that good jazz, some diagrams, Got some frequency response charts, some specs, signal to noise ratio, SPL of 130. Hmm. Interesting. We have a shock mount here. Nice full metal shock mount. Can't understate the importance of the carrying case. It is a very nice carrying case. Then inside the microphone bag. Oh, we're going to get a microphone. Actually, a really nice, weighty, heavy, feels good in the hand. That's what she said, microphone. We've got polar patterns, figure eight, cardioid, and omni. On the back, we have a low cut filter and a 10 dB pad. Got a XLR on the bottom. Man, that feels good. You got this all gold, all gold, all, all, O-O-L, all gold capsule. Nice Ceno logo. Feels really good. Looks very P120-ish AKG, but man, that is a very solid mic. All right, now that you've seen all that good stuff, let's talk about this mic a little bit. As you saw in the B-roll, it's a very well-built mic, and it actually is better built than most mics in its price range, honest to God. This thing is an absolute tank. The painting, painting, the paint, the scheme, the coating, it's really nice. It's kind of got that textured coating to it and it actually feels super premium which was surprising so let's do some tests right off the rip we don't want to waste too much time on this one because it's a nice mic nice shock mount i can actually bang on the table definitely was coming through a little bit but not too bad let's first start out with some plosives peter piper picked a peck of pickled pineapple pizza peter piper picked a peck of pickled pineapple pizza I didn't hear them that terribly in the headphones, but I definitely saw the spikes sort of on my level meter on the Vocaster one from Focusrite. This thing's 99 bucks right now, by the way. I'll put the link in the description, but I also bought the Vocaster 2, which I think you could see both in the B-roll. It's 150 bucks, and that is an absolute steal if you want to do a two-person production. I love the Vocaster line of interfaces, and I might just keep both because the one is great for mic reviews and the two is great for podcasting. And I believe if I really want to, I can run the Vocaster 1 into the Vocaster 2 from the phone out or the camera out and then a TRRS adapter into the phone out slash in on the 2. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to. But that would really be a nice, cheap, sweet, processed setup of three people for the low, low price of 250 I think that's pretty good, actually. Processing, all that good stuff, headphone jacks all the way around. There are ways to not pay seven to $800 for a podcast production studio. I digress. Let's get right on top of the microphone. When you're right on top of the SCM660, this is what it sounds like when you're right on top of the SCM660. This is what that sounds like. Now let's do off-axis rejection, talking into the front of the microphone. Now we're going to go 90 degrees off-axis, 180 degrees off-axis, 90 degrees yet again, and then slowly back around to the front of the microphone. Not too shabby. Let me, let me, not too shabby, not too shabby, not too. That's actually pretty good for a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Consider me impressed so far. Now, before I get onto the switches and all that goodness, I do want to say, I think the sound is okay. I don't love it. There's a lot of, uh, I I'm missing some low end in my opinion. I don't get a lot of that. It's a very mid forward capsule to my ears, at least. 
Uh, it's not like it's super thin, but just not enough bottom. There's not enough bottom there to, to quite make me super happy, but it's not a bad sound by any means. And before I get to the switches, how about we just go ahead and put it on enhancement and drop it down to the warm mode, which is what we're on now. And with the warm mode on the Vocaster one, I get some of that low end that I want while still keeping the mids. And it does throw a touch of top on there too. A little bit of sizzle there up top. So this sounds pretty good. I think it's totally workable, totally passable. A good, clean, nice sound with a little bit of low. Solid. Now we'll turn that back off and get back to the regular sound of the microphone, which I definitely like it with the processing on the Vocaster 1 quite a bit more, but I do on most microphones. Very few microphones am I like, I like it better unprocessed. That one touch processing on the Vocaster, while not perfect, is a heck of a great enhancement if you just want to make it simple. Now let's go through some of the polar patterns. We're on the cardioid polar pattern. We're going to switch over. It's going to be difficult because I've got the shock mount right in the way. Definitely made a loud pop there, but this is figure eight. Going to spin it around, and then you should be hearing sound coming in the rear of the microphone on figure eight. Not so much on the side, and then again from the front of the microphone. So there you go on that. Let's go to Omni, my most least favorite freaking polar pattern of them all and now we're on omnidirectional and this is what it sounds like no matter where i go on the mic it should pick up all the way around shouldn't really cut off too bad and that was omnidirectional hip-hop hooray ho hey ho i swear i wasn't calling anyone a ho i was simply singing a song from my youth low cut filter time baby not that we need that all right, now we've got the low cut filter on, and this is what it sounds like. Not a massive change, really. Might not be super aggressive, but we didn't have a ton of low end before, and we don't have a ton of low end now. A little less than a ton, actually. Let's go back to flat mode. Now we are back to flat mode, and I guess, I guess we do have a little bit of low end. You can definitely tell once you hit that low filter switch, but it's just, just lacking a little bit. But again, clean, straightforward, in your face. Not a bad sound whatsoever. Let's go 10 decibel pad. Now we've got the 10 decibel pad on, and this is what it sounds like. 10 decibel pad on, 10 decibel pad off. 10 decibel pad now off. First, I want to say thanks to Sino for sending this over. Well-built mic. I think it would get you through. Look for some sales, maybe. Look to see if this goes on sale. But I mean, here we go again. That... 100 to 200 dollar budget range of condenser microphones and they're all not all but most of them are pretty good i really don't have much of a complaint about this microphone now i do think there's better out there for 150 but the build quality the shock mount the carrying case it's it's not as if I wouldn't recommend it because i think it's a recommendable microphone i just think where it falls in the price range is iffy if you have a much heavier voice than mine lower baritone voice i think this would be up there in the 150 range because it's not really providing a bunch of heft but if you've got the heft it's going to lift you up a little bit so baritone voices and uh, probably make a great instrument mic with that 130 db of spl i mean there's definitely some great uses for this and i would use it in a heartbeat no problems but i do have mics in this price range i like better but again deeper voice you may want to check this one out now let's not digress let's get to the bb sar on the bb sar i am going to give the Sino scm 660 150 bucks great build great shock mount great carrying case so we've got some really good accessories not to mention the bag that i pulled it out from that's what she said badoom badoom never said that before in my life but the whole package 150 bucks i'm gonna go ahead and give it a seven i think it's good and it's definitely worth buying again i think you just need to know that a deeper voice is the best use case voice wise here uh instruments i think this could be really good on I could hook it up and use it on the guitar, but it's hot in the studio. And how many times do I hook the guitar up really? Not often. Just don't do it very much. So if you want to hear a short guitar test, I'll throw it on a short or something like that. I like to do those kind of tests on shorts. Makes it a little easier for me. I can do it like when I'm not in a hurry to do stuff. And uh, it also helps give me thousands of views. So yeah, there's that. Shorts are cheating. 
All right, so we gave it a seven on the BB SAR. We tested it out. We took some B roll footage of it that maybe rivaled Bronson's. <laughs> Have you seen that guy's B roll? It's fucking be- it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It does not, mine does not rival Bronson's, but what I shot the B-roll on, I'll have a video coming up about that, and that'll be fun, because it's a DIY project, a goofy one at that, but uh, one that's already proved very useful for very little dinero. Obscure Mike's Sino SCM 660's out of here. Bark is out of here. I'll see you guys next time on Obscure Mike's. Peace out.